Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse, and I am your host. Let's get into it. Welcome, 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 everybody. Looking forward to today's podcast episode, and I sure hope that you are, too. As happens quite often here on this show, um, I plan on doing something a certain way, or I plan on doing, you know, sometimes I don't even have a plan. <laughs> you know, a lot of times I'm just out here um, not winging it, but, you know, just kind of going with the flow. You know what I'm saying? Going with what the the muses give me to to feel inspired by what the Norns are weaving in that rich tapestry of weird. So um, one of the things that happens sometimes is I get messages or I get reached out to by people and get asked about a topic or in this case, today's episode, get asked about coming onto the show. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's rare unless I have something else that's been already advertised or promoted in some sort of way that I would, you know, decline a guest on the show for a week, you know. Um, so I did. I, I have a guest coming on here today. You guys probably know him from some of his musical uh, projects that he's he shared. I've, uh, I've, I've posted some stuff with him in the past. He's been on this show um, a couple of seasons ago, if I recall correctly. Um, but we are going to be talking today with Zeb room from the uh, Nordic folk band or Nordic folk music project. It's kind of a one man show as it is right now. He, he, you know, creates and produces all of his own music. Um, but his project is called Skogermore or as our friend uh, Papa Olison and at uh, Fjallvatir says Skogermayor. Um, but he's a great guy. I've known him now for many years. Um, we've met in person a number of times and we have, uh, an event coming up here later in the year, sort of a closed-off private event um, up in Appalachia with Papa Olofsson and some other friends called Fire on the Mountain. Um, I've shared some stuff about that on my various social media platforms, um, but it is a closed-off, invite-only sort of a sort of a thing, um, shamanic retreat. Um, so there won't be a whole lot of details getting shared about it, um, but he he will be present for that event. And we're looking forward to to that very much. We might be talking a little bit about that today. We will, you know, we'll see. Um, but he wanted to come on here and talk about the current direction that uh, Skogamore has has gone in with his his music and inspirations and stuff. So um, not only is he a, a talented musician, he is also an avid outdoorsman, um, a practicing heathen himself. And as I understand, he just recently relocated to uh the Appalachian Mountains himself or, or located himself to the Appalachian Mountains him and his family after a long uh process of you know getting moved with his job and, and all that kind of stuff so uh, I'm going to welcome him in today and invite you to as well before we get there please be sure to check the video uh description or podcast show notes for all the ways that you can support and follow you know uh Follow me on all my socials, the, you know, the Midgard Musings uh, social medias and, and YouTube and podcasts. Uh, follow along, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. Um, and then also check out any of the other things that I have linked in that Linktree link uh, when it comes to other ways that you can support. There's merchandise to buy. You can become a patron on Patreon. There's other things that are down there that um, if you're so inclined and you want to show your support uh, by tossing a coin my way, then those options are down there and encourage you to please check that out so um got a couple of cool things coming up here in the middle tennessee area which i will just briefly mention now um the uh let me see here the first one is actually this coming sunday um in murfreesboro <clears throat> and it is a kind of heathenry 101 or introduction to to germanic heathenry class that uh myself and um a good friend of mine greg strong from the raven moon hearth kindred we're going to be co-hosting that 
um, and that is in Murfreesboro, Tennessee at the General Bragg Trailhead. Um, there's an event page for that on Facebook, so it will be linked in the description and show notes. Um, if you're near or in relatively close proximity to the Murfreesboro, Tennessee area and you want to come out, we will be there. It is rain or shine. It is outdoors, um, but it is in a sheltered pavilion. So there's a playground there. There's restrooms. It's all it's all set, you know, plenty of uh, picnic tables and stuff to sit at. So we're looking forward to hosting that, um, Greg and I are. And then uh, later on in October, the Raven Moon Hearth Kindred is hosting their annual Shadow Moot event. And that is in Springfield, Tennessee. I'll also be having a link for that, a Facebook uh, event page linked in the description and show notes as well. Um, it is a camping sort of event if you so choose to come for that. Uh, October 13th, 14th, and then they close everything on the 15th. Um, but if you just want to come for one day, you can do that. If you decide you just want to come for the one day, then we encourage you to come on the 14th, which is Saturday, because that's when all of the classes are held, all the workshops are held, all the games are happening, the ritual, the feasting, all of the fun stuff that happens at Shadowmoot happens on Saturday. You know, Friday is kind of your arrival date, get settled in. Um, there will be a, probably a couple of things going on class-wise, um, but there's vendors as well, so there'll be all kinds of cool stuff to, to purchase. So definitely bring your purses, your wallets, um, your currency, your coin. Bring all that stuff too to support the vendors that come out here and uh, that you know sell the stuff that they do and, and offer the services that they offer. And again, like I said, it closes up on Sunday around noon. Their closing ceremony when they bid everyone farewell. And, uh, yeah, so that'll be, again, October 13th through 15th. Uh, my wife and I will be there along with some other members of my tribe, Clearly the Folk. Look forward to seeing you there. You can come. Um, it is $45 for the weekend. I think children under 12 get in free. And if you come for just a day, it's $20 for the day. Um, there are no advanced tickets to buy, so you just show up and pay, quote-unquote, at the gate, right? So um, look forward to seeing you all there. Um, in the meantime... Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get ready to welcome in Zeb Karum of Skogermayor here on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. All right. Well, here we are, folks. Uh, we got Zeb here from uh, the mountains of North Carolina representing Skogermayor, right? How, it, how do you say it? Like, I've heard it said like three different ways. I've heard Papa you know, say it. <laughs> you know, there's the easy way, right? Skogermayor, <laughs> right? Yeah. I like to say Skogermayor. Skogamior, yeah. Skogamior, but we just go Skogamor, and everyone's like, "Okay, there's Skogamor." <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it helps with the. Um, I'm sure it helps with the, uh, the, the 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 local dialect of of English that people speak. If you don't complicate things too much or add too many, you know, syllables, yeah, and <laughs> they just go Skogamor. Oh, that's that. There's there's Skogamor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, and I do get asked that a lot. Um, and so yeah, I'm like, you can just say Skogamor. It's cool. <laughs> Sweet. And that, that's actually a uh, a word that means something, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, men of the forest. Yeah. You know, it's, and you have kind of become that very much so. I mean, you always yeah. have been like a, a real avid outdoors guy, you know, um, loving being in nature and stuff. So it's fitting. It, that it was it going when I started this project back in 2020. Um you know, you instantly start thinking of like, what's your imagery? What, what's your logo? What's your name? Right. And I was going through so much, you know, and I'm, I'm digging everything I can through, you know, obviously one at Norse related. Um, and that, that term, that word just was like, this is you. How'd you, how'd you come across it? Just reading, just trying to find reading stuff, looking up terms, like, what does this mean? What can I do with forest men? And then bam, ended up coming through, I don't, I don't even remember to this day how I found it, like what the actual script was, but it says yeah. Skogamore. And then I was like, you look at it, right? And I like how it, how it was spelled. And I'm like, okay, what's this? Then I dig into it and then bam, men of the forest. And I'm like, hey, this is, this is perfect. Yeah, it's very fitting. I mean, and I love it, man. Um, you, you know me for a while. A lot of my imagery goes around uh wolves and, you know, I have a wolf dog that's been with me 12 years. So she's kind of the, the center of that logo. Um, mm -hmm. So I knew when I was having a logo created, I was like, got to have something to represent a wolf and uh, for her, you know? Yeah. And because, um, yeah, even though, 
like I'm in the forest a lot. She's always with me. So <laughs> she comes with me, um, which I also the track Wolves of Odin. You can hear her in that track. Um, I recorded her. I was working on something. I was working on another track when I was writing that album. And uh, she started her chatter, her, her Chewbacca, I call it. Yeah. And, uh, so instantly light bulb clicks and I'm like, er, mic on and just look at her and she's just rrr, 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 rrr. <laughs> so she's in the track with me man so that's something that i did uh, and that i'm always going to have stamped for the rest of my life and we'll have a, have her voice with me forever excellent yeah you just came out with a, a new single too right yes um, yes uh heaven's rent asunder um that one um had been i'm a little behind because you know, i'm working on i'm basically gonna write i'm writing a new ep and a little behind schedule um as i just purchased my new house so had a lot of crazy going on uh, originally was hoping to have this ep done by october um that didn't happen obviously um still not going to happen but if everything works out i'm going to have it done before the end of this year okay. um and i wanted to change the direction of my music a little bit not too much um you know the first album was about my family. The Crime people, Saga. Yes. And a lot of people didn't know it, but every song was like wrote for like my children um, and my family, like in general. Um, and I, there's, <clears throat> there was a lot in it. There was a lot of learning curves. There was a lot of, you know, you step out of doing heavy metal for 20 years mm. and jump into that, right? You jump into this ambient Nordic style. It's totally different um i had a lot to learn programs recording software dolls like instruments um there's been a lot to it you know and it took a little took a little while to get that album out and you know once i got done with it um you know i was happy satisfied with the product at the time you know now like you you know as you advance you're like i could have put a whistle there or i yeah. could have put another drum there <laughs> or maybe right. i put too much drum there but, you know, that's the artist in me is just always going to criticize my own work. Um, yeah. But in the end game, I wrote that album for my family. Um, I didn't really, you know, expect to to start building a fan base. It was more or less just a journey that I needed to do and I wanted to capture. Um, and then shortly after, um, you know, I was picked up with Inner Demon Records. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was very honored to join their family. Um, and they've done a great job with helping me, you know, push, push my music and push the album out there in the name too. Um, so very honored to be, you know, working with them and, and again, going to be working with them on the EP as well. Um, but yeah, with, with my background in music or heavy metal, should I say, I've always liked the darker style of music. Yeah. Um, and with the first album, there was only a couple hints of that. So with this new EP, that's where I'm driving. And so mm -hmm. when I finished Heaven's Renaissance, I was like, should I wait? No, nah, I'm not going to wait. Let's get <laughs> let's get this track out here because I want everyone to see that, you know, that's the direction to expect from the new album. Give, give them a taste of what's what's to come, right? Give them a taste, man. Um, I'm excited. Like I've got a couple of guests going to be on it, too. So uh, looking forward to working with them. Really? People you know, or uh, can you say much about it? I guess oh, you... I can absolutely say. I don't think they mind. Uh, our good friend from Feveter Workshop. Well, yeah, be, yeah, he's going to be joining me on a track, oh. doing some drumming. Sweet. Um, currently working on that track right now, um, and just I mean I don't mind sharing it. But you've been to the spot, uh, Widow's Creek Falls. Yep. So I'm writing a track because me and him both love that spot a lot. So I'm writing a track dedicated to that area. Um, was down there the other day with him. Well, not at that spot, but I left him and went to that spot and captured some recording of the waterfall itself so it can be in the track. Um, so there's there's that one. And uh, um, Chris, who fronts Sun and Moon and Dance, who is also a local pagan musician from Appalachia. Um, we, we met at a, uh, like a little rim fair. Yeah. It just got to chatting and, uh, we started talking about it and I was like, Hey, you know, I'm writing a new EP and would be honored to have you on. And he was like, 
Absolutely. So we've chatted a little bit. That's the next song that I got to finish up. Um, and uh, I highly recommend anyone look, look, watching this to definitely or listening, go to check out Sun and Moon and Dance. He's on all platforms. Um, Multi-instrumentalist. Um, beautiful. Uh, does a lot of traditional uh, folk music. And uh, he's, he's absolutely amazing. It's exciting. I was curious if, um, you know, when 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 I met you first, you know, years ago, this was before Skogamore. This was, um, you know, when, when when you and I first met, you were, uh, again, heavily uh, involved with um, <clears throat> the the more like black metal, death metal scene. Yes. And um, so I was curious, you know, we haven't really, I think, talked in, in detail about the transition from that extreme kind of music. Uh, and playing with other musicians at venues and or or in studio and going from that to becoming a solo artist that r writes and records and pr and plays everything on your uh, like on everything on your al uh, albums you know like you play the the drums uh you do the the lyre i think you've got yep. uh, a toggle harp right yep. that you dabbled in so like what was that the, the transition from you know being a, a performing musician in a band guitar whatever and then going from that into more of like the traditional stuff and being all yourself hard as hell yeah. <laughs> that's the best way to put it um with the other bands i was always known to basically kind of be the front four of like the theatrics and build in our themes and stuff like that so for me in that aspect super easy um you know i've already worked on the imagery um you know getting ready for upcoming live shows i have all, already have theatrics ready to go uh along with my image as well so that part super easy uh, i mm -hmm. think it's one of my favorite things to do as well especially when it comes to performing is throwing the theatrics in there and grabbing attention right um musically uh it's it's completely night and day i mean it is um you know i was explaining to a friend the other day and it was like you know give me a guitar and a microphone and i'll start ripping some black metal riffs and like yeah you know and just start screaming my head off right it's second nature because i've done it for so long this material takes a lot more of my creativity a lot more of my time and a, certainly a lot more of my patience um because I don't want to be over repetitious. Like I don't want to constantly do the same thing. I always want to be able to capture um, the attention and keep the attention there. Um, and I'm not saying you can't do that with metal, obviously, you know, but a lot of it can still kind of be the same. Mm -hmm. So definitely harder. And then, you know, I'm used to working with a group of individuals musically um, that, you start bouncing these ideas off and like, Hey, how about we do this? How about you do that? And you try this and oh, okay, boom. And that's how a band is formed. And that's how a band works together. Um, all I have is me myself in the mirror to kind of talk to about it and say, Hey, this is, what do you think? You know? <laughs> so, yeah. and a lot of times I record, like, especially like right now with this new EP, I get an idea, you know, and I might be at my normal uh, job and, sit there and think an idea like a riff or an idea or a rhythm pops in my head. I come home, turn everything on, grab the instrument and I lay it down and I walk away sometimes. Um, that way it can sit. And then when I'm ready to go back in, um, I have multiple material for when I start building more tracks. Um, mm -hmm. And that's helped me a lot. Um, and there's even times where I pick up my phone, like I could just be driving and I have a beat in my head and I start hitting the record on that and I'll just like, you know, mimic sounds like yep. the beat um, and then try to play that with an instrument. So <laughs> it's wow. definitely it's force. It forces me to have way more creativity. And, I, and then honestly, I love that. Hmm. I like a challenge. That, yeah, it's, that sounds challenging. Like, I know like uh, sometimes I'll get to where um, like I'll put. You know, you were talking about going to Widow Creek Falls and, and recording the waterfall, you know, um, and using those sounds of nature as part of the musical track that you're going to write. I've done right. similar stuff with some of my content where it's like I'm by the river and there's waterfalls, you know, babbling brooks, you know, things that right. give the ambient nature of the, of the thing that you're trying to do. 
Um, and then I'm like, I'm not a, I'm not a musician by any means, but then it's like coming up with, all right, well, where do I want to put a drum beat, you know, uh, rec- like looping that track or looping that piece of, of, of music or that beat to play through for, for a duration. Like it's more than just, you know, and people may not realize, but like, it's more than just coming up with that song. It's, it's, it's putting it all together in a format and, and in a way that is appealing to the ears, you know, like exactly. it's not just all like random shit. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I will tell you, one of my biggest faults is I tend to, I start with an instrument, right? Got this rhythm, and then I'm like, great. Next thing you know, I'm grabbing a mouth harp or something. I'm grabbing something different, and next thing I know, I've got a whole cluster of instruments going off, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is too much. Mm. And uh, like Heaven's Rent Asunder is an example. I think I re-recorded that um, probably about ten times before I had my lyre down to where I was like, okay. And I mean, there was at one point where I. I, I had a skin drum going too. And then I threw in a rattle. Like, I mean, I was throwing all this stuff in there. And yeah, then yeah. I sat back and I started muting them in my recording doll. And I was like, okay. And then just listening to the liar, right? And I obviously wanted some ambience in the back. So I was playing that. And then to me, like after I'd done that, I was like, <laughs> this is all I had to do. Like I was over analyzing and adding all of these things to it. And it really just needed to be simple and sometimes yeah. simple and easier, basic laid out, like comes out a lot more meaningful and it, and it, and it grabs more attention. Um, and it was so funny cause I just had to erase all the other tracks cause I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Like it's going to be just, it's going to ruin it. And, uh, and then I found the voice that I wanted to do. And then, uh, you know, the little oh, it was like that throat kind of like yeah blah, yeah blah, blah, yeah. Like, yeah yeah i'm probably gonna pass out on stage just so you know when i'm doing that <laughs> <laughs> that that's a tricky thing because like you know it's like uh it's it's like you're forcing it from your like your, the throat's the, the, the canal that the sound's coming from but like yes. the, the the tone comes from way deeper than that yes and, it, and then it's like the breath man it's like con- control right yeah and you know I'm thankful for all the screaming I've done through my metal career to be able to show how long I can hold breaths. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a whole nother element when I'm recording, cause I'm calm. I'm, I'm, I'm at this level. Like I am with you right now. Right. When I'm doing those voices, um, versus live, it's not the same. Yeah. The, your energy, your, your, everything about you, like you got adrenaline going, and everything just completely changes to where it's like i know i'm not this short-winded like i know i can hit that and i know i can hold that but like live is a whole nother thing man and uh you know but that's what practice is for and building it up and getting used to it i was curious too with um like with the croom saga you know you mentioned all of the songs that you had written for that album were for your family Mm-hmm. Um, and actually when you, when you put that album together, there, there's a track on there called Midgard Musings. I remember you wrote it, yep. um, for, you. for, 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 yeah, for, for the channel, yeah. for the podcast. And, yep. uh, it was, it was, it was, it's a great track. And there's whenever I like at the end of, uh, for people that don't maybe know, right at the end of all of my episodes, when it's like <clears throat> the end screen credits and, and stuff, there's a segment of a song that you wrote, um, for me that hasn't been released yet anywhere other than just to me like it was given to me and um there's a segment of that song that um i still plan to i want to do something i want to i want to produce some sort of video content for that song because it's a great it's a great track and i want the world to hear it um and it really captures the the dark you know uh, the dark ambient nature that you've kind of gravitated to so I was what I was wondering was, you know, when you wrote all the songs and and who they were written for in the Kroom saga, um, is is the EP, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, is it um, a themed EP or are are there other things that you're writing so in mind for? Yep. So, man, I'm um, I'm going through um, some very spiritual stuff um, with my path and 
um, this album is going to reflect a good bit of that. Um, and it's something that has always mean something to me, but it's definitely something that um, I'm ready to put out in a music form. So there will be a theme, but as far as like individual, like how I done the last album, no, this one is more about, and it's not necessarily about myself. It's more about um, me just being able to get this energy out that I'm ready to get out. And uh, the creative, you know, I've already got a few tracks down um, and I'm just, I'm, and I'm happy because as soon as I start writing, man, it is, it is hard to get me away from my, my studio because once I start, I mean, next thing I know, it's like 3 a.m. And I'm like, uh, I got to get up a couple hours to go to work. <laughs> uh, so the creativity is, is, is there, the energy is there. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 I will say this, that it, like I said, it will be darker, um, more ambient, very shamanic, if that makes sense. I like it. When you uh, when when you released uh, the Kroom Sagas, there I and I don't remember time wise, so maybe you can help me with that. You have at least a couple of songs that you filmed music videos for the, 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 those 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 tracks, right? Yes. Um, Wolves of Odin, I think, was one of them. Wolves of Odin was the very very first one, um, and. Cause I had wrote a few tracks Midgard Musings being one of the very first few in that area. Um, and was of Odin was actually the very, very, very first track that I sat down with. And like I said, you can definitely get my vibe of the darker ambient in that track. Cause mm -hmm. that I knew that I wanted to do that, but I also knew for the sake of where I was as a whole and the musician I was at the time and writing for family, I didn't want all these kind of creepy sounding songs for all my my family, right? Right, right. Um, but Wolves of Odin, yeah, you know, we, and it, it was a song about about tribe, man, and it was about, um, you know, we all go through experiences with friends and and um, and family through your life, right? Where one minute your your best friend may no longer be your best friend, um, and that's basically what that song was about unfortunately was about losing some close people mm -hmm. um in my life and change with time man you know as as we grow older we change um and sometimes you find out that maybe you need more positive people in your life if that makes sense or maybe what what you used to do with people is not really your thing no more and, and, and that's in all aspects and um and that's what that track was about man it was it was basically saying hey you know like We'll always have that bond, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we we really need to be hanging out together all the time. And uh, one of my friends was a uh, sacrifice in the video. We're still good friends today, but he, uh, you know, we we did a uh, sort of like a little of a blood eagle scene on him in it. Um, I, I'm a one man show. I had I had someone picked out to do really extreme FX for that video. Just being a one man show, I couldn't afford it. Um, and I do hope to one day be able to do a full on blood eagle in a music video, um, <laughs> but that happened. And yeah, then you, uh, could, you, you could definitely get the sense of what was happening in that video, you know, like right. the betrayal almost, you know, like, exactly, exactly. Uh, the, 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 yeah, that that lack loss of trust between you know, people. And and and, and you know, and unfortunately, man, it happens, man. And you know, even yeah. myself, I've been through things um, just recently even since that video has come out with close friends, you know, um, and you just, it happens, man. And you just go forth and, uh, you do what you got to do for you and your family. Um, absolutely. But then, the yeah, then I had another video, which is my Valhalla. Um, yeah, that one was awesome with all of the, the Valkyries and, and the, the, and so the, much the costume work. department was on point with that video, dude. Like <laughs> man, you guys so nailed it. Much, so much work. I would tell you, of my entire career, all the music videos I've shot, um, that one was is is today still my most favorite one. Um, multiple days of filming. There's so much footage that couldn't even make it because um, like I knew I wanted to make a a small movie, right? I knew that I wrote this script. Um, I started calling friends, um, asking them to be in it, what you could do, boom, boom. boom. 
Like I actually had a movie director friend who was going to come down, and unfortunately, the day of the shoot, he had a family emergency come up. And then I'm like, ah, I'm panicking because <laughs> I've got like all these people coming out because on that on that particular day was the battle scene and then um, my funeral, right? So yeah. we had two two locations there at that day to be at, and I'm like, I'm panicking, man. I got people driving from all over the state to come here to be in the video. And uh, one of my friends who, who I hired to be the FX on the set also has helped me in the past we've done some movie stuff together and and i'm on the phone with her that morning and i'm like yo the director has dropped and she was like okay i'm gonna be there earlier we're gonna get this i need your script so i was like yes ma'am i got him let's go uh she's a great great she's one of my best friends man uh we've done a lot of stuff together filming and stuff and uh she got there early and i ran her through the script i was like this is this is what we got to do here you know, it was like wrangling a bunch of cats, man. Like, you got all mm-hmm. these people. Mm-hmm. Some of these people's never met each other, but they're all excited. They're ready to be in the video, and they know they're going to war, right? We got this whole battle scene planned. By the end of the day, man, I probably took five years of my life off from the stress. Um, yeah. we were we were chasing time. You know, we shot in the winter, so. Oh, daylight, yeah. We were chasing daylight, um, and you can kind of see, which it worked out perfectly – uh, when we do the funeral pyre because the light was coming down. So then the actual fire um, looked beautiful. It came out great. But mm-hmm. that that song is very special. Um, and I've been asked a few times if I was going to play it live. And the answer is no. I don't want to play that one live. Um, I wrote that song for one reason. Um, and that song is for all three of my children. That That is a song for them to let them know that there's going to be a day where they got to tell me goodbye. Right. And they got to tell me goodbye forever. And that song is just letting them know that I love them and that I dedicated my life to them. And I don't want them to ever forget me, but also know that I'm always going to be with them and I'm always going to look after them, even in, even after death. And so it means a lot to me. It was more out of the, all the tracks, they all mean something to me, but that one meant the most because I knew at any moment, you know, I could be took away from this world and um, I want to leave something behind that they have. And I want them to know that dad loved them. So, yeah. so even though the song comes off very, like very, you know, pretty sounding and melodic, it's on the other side, it is. Then it also has a little bit of a morbid side to it because you see me go to war. You see me lose. Like you see, there's a moment and one of my favorite parts, uh, well, me and my friend are at the battle, you know, and you see like him knock the thing out of my hand, my sword, and I go for my axe and I just take a breath. You can see I'm tired and you can also see him like looking at me like, damn, I can't defeat this guy. What's yeah. it gonna take to take him down? But you see my moment of I'm tired. Right. And I, that it just the way that we we the cameraman caught that. I mean, we went over that part probably 10 times. Um, and as we were going through the footage, I was like, this is perfect. That's what I wanted to get that image out. I wanted to show them that I'm tired and it was time for me to be took down. Yeah. But my favorite part of writing it was you see him obviously slit my throat, which again, we was on time. We had a whole thing set up where we was going to see blood come out of my throat. Didn't get to do it right. So it was one of those instant like cut screens, bam, I'm down. And you see my two berserkers walk up and just whoo, like from behind and they just like take him out. So where he's like, I got victory, we wipe him out, man. Yeah, yeah. And, Short lived. Uh, <laughs> he captured the remaining members of his army, and that's where we go to the funeral pyre. And then my favorite part there is you see I have uh my two sons in that scene, actually. And if you notice, I'm wearing a cloak in the beginning of the war. Um yep. At the funeral, my oldest son is wearing my cloak and he's got my sword. He is sword, now yeah. thrown and he, he gives the signal to execute them. And and uh, my poor son was sick that day, man. But he had so much fun just being able to like, I get to be king now. I'm like, yeah, you get to yeah. be king, right? That's it. And uh, <laughs> For the moment, he got, right. he got to, you know, send the signal out and then boom, we execute the whole uh the whole thing, it was like three members, and then uh, we decapitated the one, and then we gave him the ultimate shame by shoving his head up his ass. 
Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it was a lot to it, man. Um, the thing at the very end, like you said, the Valkyries, like I said, this that was a whole other day of shooting, too. Um, uh, actually, one of those Valkyries is the lady that helped me with the FX and the directing. She was one of the Valkyries, too. She said she'd done all the makeups. Um, but she, uh, we got there and there was another cold day. Like I'm on this ground wet several times, but we, we shot right back in the scene where I was killed. Um, we, and then you see me like out of my war gear and I'm looking clean and then that's them picking me up basically. And I'm looking yeah. around, like I'm trying to figure it out, but then yeah, we walk yeah. up to the light. Um, and that, you know, is them taking me to Valhalla. And then what you see me in the very end clip, and unfortunately it didn't come out quite as clear, but I'm standing in the middle of a waterfall playing my drum, and we've got, like, a little bit of the gold essence around in the, in the scene. And that's me showing that I'm at peace, you know, that I've made it, and I'm happy. Um, and that's just something, again, that goes towards my kids, is I want them to know that even when that day comes, not to worry about me, you know, mm -hmm. that – I did my life's duty and uh, I'm sure I'll be happy there. It's so. a beautiful tale, you know, to, to tell because, and it's real, you know right. what I mean? Like the, the theatrics, the, 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 the theater aspect of it makes it really interesting and captivating for an audience. But the, 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 the subject matter, you know, is, is very real and it's, it, it touches all of us because, you know, the day of our doom is set and none can escape it. Right. You know? but, but fear not death exactly um and that's and so, that's the deal man and uh yeah because you never know life is uh life life doesn't have a date on it but it certainly has an expiration date you just don't know when yeah yeah and uh so that was the that was the point of that whole album man that was that 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 particular song like I said why it means so much to me and and why i've chose to not add it to my live set list is because it just has a meaning that i want it to be there i want my children to know it's there, you know, I don't ever see YouTube or, you know, streaming sites going away, not to mention they will have an actual physical copy. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's a legacy. It. Yeah. So but yeah, that one uh but again, you know, just shooting wise outside of the meaning of it, um, the filming was just extraordinary fun, man. I want I really from all my past videos and helping other bands do music videos, you know, this was my one one video where I really wanted to step it up and I really wanted to, to go out of the box a lot. And I wanted to build again, like I wanted to build a mini movie about it. And, uh, mm -hmm. and um, I'm very, very satisfied. You know, some people were like, man, this thing's like 12 minutes long, but I'm like, <laughs> well, it's a movie. So it's more. Well, yeah. Movie. I mean, plus, considering the fact like, you know, a track, you know, a, a musical track is, is that that's, that's long for right. the, your average song you know um considering you know like three to five minutes is like an average i think yeah length of, of a you know of a studio release but having that story because i think now you know you have this this tale that's being told and then there's you know people can imagine it in their mind's eye by listening to the song but then they have this thing that that can paint that picture more vividly right and, and give them something to really latch on to visually um, but still kind of be creative in their own way and, and where it touches them. Cause, and that's the beauty of art and music anyway, you know, like you wrote it for a very specific, with a very specific purpose in mind. And, you know, other people that hear it can maybe find, find their own purpose in it too. Right. You know? Um, and it's, it's had great reviews. Um, it's had a good bit of viewings. Um, YouTube's being a uh, complicated at the moment for some reason with my my stuff. Um, they stopped some comments from happening on that video, and and it was and, and it really bites because I was having a lot of fun because it it obviously was going around the world, um, yeah. and I was able to communicate with people all over the world, and they were leaving me comments. You know, obviously you got your negative people who are always going to like. Eh, Rah, you think you're a Viking, but no, you know, <laughs> like, no, I don't, but okay, but you don't know me, so whatever. But, um, but the people that were enjoying it in different languages, I was able to, you know, translate it and then and then speak back to them and just let them know how much I appreciate right. it and taking the time to even watch it, you know. Yeah. Um, because I don't know what's going on with my YouTube. I mean, you can still comment on it, but it's just weird, like, it's I, I don't know, and, and the views, but 
Um, I know the views the last time I looked, I think we're closing in close to about 10,000 views on it. So, Shoot, um, yeah. You know, it's not the biggest views I have. Um, actually, was of Odin, not the music video, but the album track itself. It was closing in, I think, 88 or 90,000 views. So, um, seeing okay. that, like, I, went, I didn't even know it, man. I just one day I just like logged in and I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's so a did you know that? And I was going to mention this too. Like, did you know that? Um, so, Donheim used to have this 24 hour radio on YouTube mm -hmm. where it was all like Viking related music, Norse right. folk music, right? Um, he had to shut that down. Yeah. And, but there's another one, like, I forget the name of it. It starts with like Hooknogger or Hook, something like that. No, um, you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yep. I've heard some of your music on that. Yep. yep. Um, and I'm yeah. like, hey, I know that song and I know that guy. And hey, you know? <laughs> yeah, cool, dude. It, it, it made me excited. Really I was like, I, same. I was a fan of the channel. Um, yeah. And to hear my music on it, like, same thing. It was just like, Wow. Did you have anything like, to do with that? Um, so we did have a conversation. Um, we did talk, and and uh, he asked okay. permission, and I was like, cool. "Yeah, sure." Like, I didn't know how that stuff works, you know. Yeah, but I was like, like... You know, and then in my mind, I'm like, "Is this really going to happen?" You know what I'm saying? Like, like okay. And then boom, it happened. Like I got a notification, and then there was people that have found me, um, because of listening to his channel. So I'm always yeah. grateful for that man and uh he definitely awesome. looks like he put me out there and uh to be amongst other bands that inspire me you know is it's an cool. honor yeah because i mean like you know donheim plays on there wardruna highland yes. Eatland, aola elder i mean there, there's so many right. people that doing that are doing things like what you do right the the, the kind of the, the solo artist that that produces mixes masters records does everything themselves and you know being in that company's got to be you know, pretty rewarding, I would say. Dude, it's to, I love it, man. And that yeah. channel runs twenty four seven. It was at Fin. Oh, I'm gonna mispronounce it. I better not even try. But <laughs> Fimble Radio was done. Was 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 Mike? Yeah. Uh, was was Michael's? Was yeah. it Michael and Mark? Mike? Yeah, Mike uh, yep. Schaefer. Right, he was the one yep. that That's was doing it. the Fimble Radio. Yeah, and then that got shut down, and um, which we got the other thing now. But still, yeah. it's like. It, I, got, I heard that one day and I'm like, damn, that's cool, man. Zeb stuff is on the radio or on the internet, you know, like playing on a, on a station that runs 24 hours. It runs 24 hours, man. And a lot of time when I'm at work and I'm in my office, that's, that's playing on one of my monitors. Right. Because, and it always makes me excited when I, and when I hear it, cause I'm just like, Oh, it's like, I like little butterflies, man. I'm all happy. It's a me. Like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any, um, so you're talking about live performances, right? Yes. Like initially when you, when you came with into Skogamore, Skogamore, uh, it was, you didn't go into it thinking that it was ever going to have a fan base. Like you mentioned that earlier, like you were not doing live shows and now here you are. I think you've got a live show coming up, uh, next, next month. That's correct. Um, um, yeah, I've been, I've been, I've got a few shows lined up, um, all already into March as well. Um, um I've had a couple others, but because of my move, I obviously couldn't take them on and I really wanted to, but I also knew that like, Hey, I'm not going to be able to give you the best performance. So therefore I said no to those. Um, but the, the one upcoming is October 28th. It's called the Brown mountain light festival. Um, I will be there uh, doing some vending as well. Cause you know, I, I craft as well and I make beard products. Um, and it's another way for me to get my music heard. So I do vending events and, um, so going to be their vending, and I'm amongst a lot of bands, man. It's a great lineup. I'm obviously the only one of my style on it. Um, so, but I there is actually some heavy metal bands, and there's actually a heavy metal band on there that I'm playing next to who are amazing, and they're really, really close friends of mine. So um, shout out to Angel Massacre. Uh, if you're listeners and you're a big fan of black metal, check those guys out. Um, they're amazing live. They, they put on a hell of a show, man. So I'm honored to get to be reunited with some friends from my metal days. Um, so I'm looking forward to this and it, the show, man, is a, um, so it's like a festival and it's a downtown area, um, of the town of Morganton. So it's like one of the like little amphitheater setups, um, that I get to perform on that stage. So, um, it's going to be loud. Um, I'm bringing 
I'm bringing the darkness, man. I'm bringing the the fog, man. I'm bringing all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm geared up for it, and I'm ready. And I can't, I can't wait. I'm curious though, because I'm not going to be able to make the show. But are are you going to be like, will there will there be any filming of the show going on? Because I mean, I'm just picturing like the music that I listen to that you make is you know it's done in a studio. You're putting all of these, you're, you're piecing all of these things together to make the music. And then now you're going and you're going to be a live performer. How does that, how is that going to work? <laughs> like, how are you going to play? Like, I've heard of the one man band where you got like a, a drum and then a harmonica <laughs> yeah, and a guitar, the floor, right, man? And he's, like shaking his head and it's like a cowbell up on the top of his head. Like, <laughs> no. So, <laughs> I wish I could do that, man. Those guys who do that has got some talent, man. Let's just right, say that. right. Um, no, man. So a lot of it is I have to zone in and, you know, I've had to create backing tracks and then there's this whole thing I've been seeing. People's like, oh, backing tracks. Well, look, when you're one person writing multiple to. instruments, how the hell else are you supposed to play live, right? Without yeah. a backing track? You can't. It's impossible. Or I would have to hire musicians right. to come in and play with me. But then that defeats me being solo. Mm. So back and tracks is my friend, which, you know, I've made back and tracks for all the songs I'm performing live. And, you know, I have it where what instrument sticks out the most per track. That's the instrument that I'm playing at that time. And there is a track or two where I switch instruments as well during the set. Um, so it's all it's all right here in front of me. I can able to get to my instruments like stands, grab it, go. Um so a lot of wires is hooked up, so I got to be careful not trip on stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it's that's you know to me again, you know, like when it comes down to you know like the tar hoppa, right? That tar hoppa's got to be played, man. I can't have that as a back track, right? I got to get up there and play it. And uh, a friend of mine um, does amazing leather work, and they're actually making me a really custom cool strap because you can't just go to Guitar Center and get a tar hoppa strap. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. so. That is the challenging part, man, is the good thing about it, though. And, you know, it's kind of like um, like click tracks when you're playing in bands. Mm -hmm. um, I got that track to keep me in time. Right. I'm not relying on a bunch of guys hanging around me. It's me in that track. And I've got to play to that track. And that track never misses time. Right. Because, yeah, it, it's programmed to not miss time. <laughs> so um, but, yeah, that's how it comes down. I wish I say it was as cool as putting a bunch of instruments around my legs and my feet and my toes. <laughs> but. No, nah, man, it's, it's, it, it comes down to playing one instrument at a time. And, and you know, at the level now where I am expanded to being a multiple instrumentalist, it's um, the hard part really honestly is choosing my favorite instrument and which one I want to play the most. And, and again, I just have to listen to the track and say, hey, all right, well, now the skin drum sticks out the most in this one. So that's the one I'm going to play. Do you have a favorite instrument? Like if you had to pick one? with Skogermore that you know this this iteration of Skogermore you know, like the dark ambient focus the shamanic side uh of the music is there a particular instrument that you just are more like you enjoy playing more than another or does it depend it's, it's hard man yeah. <laughs> I love them you know I love them all I would definitely my favorite and I'll tell you because it is the most challenging is the tar hoppa man um I've definitely came a long way from the beginning but I'm still not where I want to be with that instrument. Um, you know, as far as playing the skin drum or the rattle, even playing the mouth harp today, and I also play a traditional flute. Um, that tar hoppa, man, is probably my favorite, man. It's the sounds that you can make on that, and I, which I have two of them now, but the sound of just, just the dreadful tones that you can get out of it, but also oh, yeah. beautiful tones out of it. Um, definitely probably I'd, I'd have to say it's my favorite. And, and again, because it's also the hardest one that I've had to challenge the most challenge out of. I can see that because um, it, to me, it's almost like a, like when you hear a violin, right? Um, it can, it can be the most or bagpipes, you know, yeah, they can be the most beautiful, captivating sounding instruments in, in, in skilled hands. And then if you don't know what the heck you're doing, they sound God awful. Like, yeah. Terrible. Yeah, like, it sounds like cats dying or geese getting stepped on or yeah. And I was I was very fortunate at a young age being exposed to um violin or I might as well say fiddle. My father was a bluegrass individual. Yeah. Um so I used to go to a bunch of bluegrass festivals with him. 
Um, and I picked up the fiddle and uh, one of his old friends used to teach me how to play it right. And uh, actually my high school um, senior project was me spending the year learning how to tackle the fiddle and then performing it um, for my, my project. Um, so I was very fortunate to have a little bit of background and by no means am I sitting here telling you that I'm an amazing violinist because I am not. But I could definitely make some tones and make some tunes. Um, but I don't remember half of anything that I used to on it. Um, and it, it is treated, Tahapa is very similar in the fact that you have the, the bow, right? You've got to bow these yep. strings. But the difference is there isn't a fret. It's open. Right. And it's the pressure of the pads on your tips and then the back of your finger. Like that's what works the tones. And you've got to, you sort of got to imagine, right, that there's a fretboard there if you used to fretboard on every other instrument that you're used to playing. But it don't have that. It's it's literally just touching that string and put, applying the right pressure and that way making sure you got the right rhythm with that bow. Interesting. Um, so I had a question, too, about the musical style of Skogamore, um, and how it's evolved into where you're going with it. You know, you're located in... In, in, in an area of the country, in an area of the world that is one of the oldest, if not the oldest spits of land, pieces of land, mountain ranges, right, that are in existence. The Appalachian mountain ranges um, are millions of years older than even the Rockies, you know what I mean? Um, and there's a lot of rich history in Appalachia, um, folk music being one of them, you know? And I was curious, has has the like has the, the 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 history and the tradition of Appalachia been been something that has guided you along your musical evolution with Skogamore? You know, like it's Nordic folk music, right? Like we know that, like the, the, you know, the Valhalla, Wolves of Odin. I mean, like clearly, it's it's a Nordic theme sort of thing. But I was just curious: has has Appalachia infu been infused or, or, or given some of its magic to your musical process at all? Absolutely. Um, being here is, you know, I lived once in Appalachia, and now it had been a, then I moved on the outskirts. Um, so getting to come back to this. Um, there's so much magic here, man. There's so much in the air. There's so much spirit here. Um, and that's the other reason why I think recently, um, why my creativity has just went into overdrive, man. And I spend a lot of time, you know, on my property, um, and I'm near beautiful land that I can go visit at any point. Um, today I emerged before we got on this call, I merged myself into one of the creeks. Um, and, I've made that a thing to do every week as much as I can throughout the week. You know, there's not a week that I'm going to miss it. You know, I might only have one time that week that I did it, but for instance, this, yeah. this since Friday, I've done stuff in, you know, with nature, but this, this, the Appalachia is just beautiful, man. And so much history here, so much spirituality, um, that this sings amongst these, these forests and these mountains and these waterfalls. So, absolutely i definitely see a huge influence going for this new ep um and i am looking for and i've been it's been in the back of my mind to find a way to give a piece of it of respect within at least one of my tracks so that it sticks out and you know the one i talked about widow creeks falls that's definitely one of them but i definitely want more than just that one yeah i mean i feel like that's almost a given now because yeah, you know, like you say, as as much as you're immersed into the to the with the with the land, as much as you spend time, your you know your property um, is is etched into the side of of a mountain. You know, right. for goodness sake, and it's like you're 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 part of that body now. You know what I mean? So it's almost to me, it would almost be like, well, duh, of course it's gonna right. have an impact, you know, and an influence on things. And I know what you mean about that. Um, that area just being such a, a vibrant energy. I've, I've been there a couple of times. I've been just right up the road, you know, uh, Fjallvatir workshop, you guys are res in, in respect, you know, close to one another. And 
uh, I, I've been there uh, some, you know, several times, and we're coming back. Uh, our, our people here in Tennessee are coming back to right. there, and some of us, some of some of the people that are coming with us are, you know, this is their first time. Right. And I'm uh, I'm so excited for for that because I know what's there and I know what it feels like, and I'm just like, wait till you guys <laughs> get here and experience what's available. You know what I mean? Like, you just, you, I feel like you'd have to be like checked out of life entirely to go there and not feel anything and leave right. and feel the same as you did when before you got there you know like you have to be just mentally and, and everything else just like checked out of life to to not right. feel what's going on there um i had some friends come up this weekend and um it was like a last minute let's run in and can we hang out I was like yeah come on up and uh that's what i did in mass but this weekend showing them some falls showing them the mountain peaks and they and, and my favorite part is just them just huh Ah, ah. <laughs> you know, and, and taking yeah. pictures, and uh, I took them up on the parkway the first night they got here. Like they got here, and about an hour later, we drove up on the parkway, and I showed them the stars, and I was like, "I promise you, you've never seen the stars as bright as you will see right here in this area." And uh, they were just so happy, you know, and and seeing the star, and they were you, just the peace that people get from it. And, and I'm with you, like um, for you to not for someone to never experience it, and then get there to experience it, and just like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? Like, you all right there, man? Right, right. I mean, and it, you know, it's it's an honor that I have the privilege of seeing it daily. Um, and that is something that I don't take for granted, man. I, I love it and I cherish it and I respect it. Um, and I and I can't wait for you and your tribe to come down and, and spend that time with us. I'm looking forward to it. I would like to admit, I would like to just put this out into the universe, right? Put this out into the and, and, and speak it into existence. Um, I hope that while we are there, that um, you know, for for the fire on the mountain thing, and I'm not, I'm not going to go into a lot of details about it. it I, I've mentioned it enough to say that it's a private, closed off sort of thing. It's an invite only. Yep. Uh, people know about it, but that's about all there's going to be to uh, to that extent. I hope that when we're there, that we get a chance to hear some of Scobermore stuff in person. <laughs> Yes. Bring, bring, bring the toggle heart. Bring the lie. Bring, bring all of the things. You know, and, <laughs> and, and and let's, you know, let let's feel that spirit. You know, um, I would just like to say that much. Absolutely, and it was something that I already was planning on. So, <laughs> so we would definitely have it. Um, yeah, same thing. You know, from my social media, I also had announced this was a, a private. Call. I shared, I shared the flyer, and then everyone instantly. Where's this? Where are we going to do this? And I'm like, yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. We're, we're... It's a very private invitation only. We don't know what the future holds. You never know how much more it's going to expand. But uh, definitely, um, like I said, later on, something we can get into. So the last thing I wanted to qu uh, ask you about, too, because I want to be respectful of your time um, on, on today's show and, and um, is with the EP. Um, <clears throat> and, you, and you mentioned some 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 setbacks with its release and you're thinking of it maybe being released you know by the end of this year that's the hope that's the goal right and right. knowing how things are going to go um does that mean that you have all of the material written that you want on the ep or could there be things that happen between now and let's say november or whenever that could make make its way onto the ep or, or 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 have you got all of your stuff tracked out and ready to go it's just a matter of putting it all together it's it's very um very unique you ask that because no i do not have all the tracks done and i've had an idea of something when we're all together mm. um and that may happen and mm. uh yeah so yeah i think we're on the same brain waves right there um, yeah. I feel like that what you're asking is something I'm already was thinking and <laughs> come together. Um, but no, the, all the tracks are not finished. I, I, there are still a few tracks that I've got to put more time in and actually get to a creative part of them. Yeah. And I think that's good to, you know, as, as, a, as an artist and as a, as a, you know, musician and, and as a performer, right. I, I think uh, I'm not that. But I am somebody who creates content and, and, and has a sense of an obligation to put things out on, at, on a you know, specific cadence, you know, um, on certain topics, right? This, that thing and the other. Um, and then I'm also 
uh, for me, you know, in this place where I'm like, but I'm not going to force it to happen. You know, Um, before you came on here, I was telling people like, you know, this episode, this week's episode that's that that we're that we're recording right now was not planned in advance. I had something else planned that I was going to talk about tonight. And then you hit me up and we're like, I would love to, you know, um, talk about, you know, Skogamore and, and, and the things that we've talked about tonight. And then I'm like, so what are you doing later? You know, yeah, and it yeah. was like not, not, not that we're like shooting from the hip out here, um, but that we're being so sensitive to the flow of things that sometimes what I had like the, some, so what basically what I'm saying is like the things that we have plans for, like a loose framework of a, a, a basic idea of what we want to do can sometimes be shifted and, and readjusted for something else that needs to happen that that's maybe of, of more importance or more priority. And so to let things happen organically and, and naturally, right. I guess, is the point, you know, don't let the don't let the this over uh, this overarching feeling of I've got to have this out by the end of the year. Or, I've got right. to have this out by the by, right. you know, I've got to talk about this topic or whatever it might be. You know, don't let that be the thing that drives us to do it i think i think that if we do and if we lean towards that that we're going to see um the the the, the quality and and the spirit behind things exactly. take a hit no you know? you're 100 right 100 percent right and, that, and you know i don't want that from this album this album i want every album i create to be meaningful and um yeah whatever direction it continues to drive the the you know the universe will drive it right but I'm 100% with you. It's like, yeah, I originally, I you know, I had my goal set and then I missed it, right? But I'm in no rush because, you know, I could, it might be spring of next year before I'm finished. But yeah, who knows? I want to make sure that, you know, not only for myself, but for for the fan base as well, I want to make sure I'm delivering the best of my capabilities. Um, and I want to continue creating um, stuff that, that people can relate to and enjoy themselves um, um, much, much like yourself. I know you're the same way, you know, you want to keep on the same, same pace and uh, yeah, definitely rushing it. And it was funny. Cause you know, I was just like, I was just like, oh, what Jesse's up to, you know, and I hit you up and then you're like tonight. And I'm like, yep, I can do tonight. And you know, all yeah. I, had was I was doing some foraging through the forest and I was like, yeah, man, well, let's do it. Let's do it tonight. Yeah worked out well you know yeah completely unplanned <laughs> yeah and that's just what i'm saying like here's a case in point you know for everybody you know listens and watches it's there's there's a method to the madness a lot of times um and, and a lot of the other times it's just like well let's just see how it goes right you know what i mean like i don't have stuff booked out months in advance like a lot of other podcasters or, or content creators do i'm not saying that that's wrong or that i shouldn't or you know that you know it, it just doesn't that's not where I'm at with it right now. Right. I don't have things in a backlog that just need to be put out. And I also don't have a, a, a crap ton of content that is just sitting waiting to be released. Um, it's, you know, life, life of course happens too. you know, like things that pop up that are, our moral obligations, our social obligations that take precedence over some of these other things that while uh, are entertaining and enjoyable for, the audience that we want to reach um sometimes that just doesn't take the that's not the most important thing at the moment you know right and i think that the people that are invested into the things that we do understand and appreciate that you know like they they want what's going to be the best quality that we can pr- produce you know what i mean exactly. and they don't want to be just given something for the sake of being given something exactly they, right i want to yeah i want to I want to give the best of my abilities and the, the best quality I can do. And uh, rushing it, you don't do that. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I feel like some of my, you know, and I will say some of my first album, I do feel like I rushed some things, man, because I was so anxious. I was so excited to, to to have this out there. And I do feel like they're, you know, like, again, I'm an artist. So I criticize myself. And then I mm-hmm. listen to some things and I'm like, ah, I should have done that better. So that, that, that was a lesson learned that I, that I don't want to do, you know, on this album. I want to make sure that, that everything is there. Everything lines up the way it needs to. And uh, when the time is right, that EP will come out. Yeah. You know, and I know that, um, and, and, and I'm going to be very vague, um, but I know from some of the things you've told me the last time we met in person just was a month or two ago. Right. Um, 
I know that, you know, some of the things that you've, um, that you've experienced, you know, you talked earlier on the show about your spirituality and your, your, your growth and your path, right? I know for a fact that some of the things that you experienced that you talked to me about are absolutely the reason why you've taken this angle and why you're able to see it in this way now. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh yeah. Absolutely. And I'll leave it at that. I just, I know yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, kind recognizes kind, you know? So you right. Can, right. Yeah, I get man. it. I've been there and I, I, I'm there with you, man. Like I, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. And so it's beautiful to see that, that, um, that's, that's a universal lesson. Right. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't have to be, I'm not a, perf- I'm not an artist, a musician in the, you know, you're not a podcaster and, and the next person's not a blacksmith or, or iron smith or bone carver or a drum maker or whatever right like everybody does their own things <laughs> the universal language that you know these lessons of life can can teach us is don't force it don't force let it, it happen man. just let it happen just listen to it. the universe speak to you the way it needs to speak to you you know and just you know be there for it be present for it be be active with it and 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 once we become part of that design once we realize, I think, that we're not just here to, you know, it, it's not for us to just wait for things to go by and us miss it. It's for right. us to kind of latch on to this and, and be a part of the experience, you know, and exactly. experience it in our own separate ways, in our own individual ways. But then also have this collective experience, this convergence that takes place, you know, and, and yeah. it just resonates so, so vibrantly for, for, for people, you know, like. I'm here, you're there, but we understand each other to that degree. And that, and that's that Absolutely. universal language, that, that network that speaks and, and miles distance is irrelevant because we're connected in that way. There's a, there's a connection that whether you try to or not, whether you realize you have or not, you're, you're, you're part of it now. Exactly. Um, and that's, you know, I've, I've said before, you know, even you and I's, like our friendship, like how we met um, and how we've always stayed in touch throughout that part of our life, through that journey and to where we're sitting at today. Um, and just how, you know, like you said, how connected we are now um, and understand each other more on a different level now than we did when we first met, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I always look forward to chats with you or seeing you in person mm-hmm. and, you know, and, uh, you know, sharing our content. Um, also mm-hmm. very proud of you hitting that big goal you just hit with the subscribers. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Watching you, you know, watching you grow as well and prosper, man. It's, it's awesome, man, to see that for you as well. And Again, I do believe that is a universe that's been working with you and speaking to you. I, I know from the beginning, seeing Midgard Musings from the very, very early days, you know, and seeing where you're at now, man. So I, uh, that is definitely a uh, universe has been there with you and it spoke to you and it's, it's, it's got you where you need to be. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. It's been a wild ride and it continues to be a wild ride. you know, you, yeah, <laughs> you hit some nerves earlier where you're like, you know, I don't get the YouTube thing. I'm like, boy, howdy, man. Like, I mean, I get <laughs> I don't get YouTube half the time either. You know, the, the one time where the algorithm's like, do this and you'll be all right. I'm like, cool doing it. And then, you know, 12 hours later, like, just kidding. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I, was, I had a thing going on here, man, because I listened to your dumb ass. But hey. Right. It, and you know, musical side, been there too, man. Been there too. I've had my, my, my delts with streaming and. Yeah. And, uh, and I, you know, I was actually laughing and not laughing in a negative way, but um, just a few weeks ago. So I haven't checked any of my royalties from Skogamur. Um And for the first time the other day, I was just like, oh, what is there, like $20? Because, you know, it's like it's, it's decimals on the yeah. cent, right? Yeah, right. It ain't even pennies on the dollar. It's, it's fractions <laughs> of a penny. no. On the and uh, I checked and actually had a, a, a good check in there. And it was like, hey, you can cash this out. And I was like, this well, ain't yeah. my account. Like, there's no way. <laughs> is you know, there like, another out here that I don't know yeah, about? And I'm like, this is, this is right. Like, I know this is my account. Let me make sure 
because it, it blew me away, man, because I'm so used, you know, even from metal bands and like trying to get royalties yeah. and stuff. And it was like, all right, guy, you get twenty dollars, I get twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Good job. You might and, get a, you might get to eat tonight. You guess like you gotta like, well, do I eat or do I put gas in the car? Yeah, we're going to Waffle House, is what we're doing. <laughs> and uh so Congratulations. That today, it, it set me back and I was like, Wow, like I go I go solo, I, I go I do this journey on my own and this is the most from royalties that I've ever, ever respectively earned. And I was like, okay. And I left it in there. I was like, I'm not even going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> let it just yeah, let it grow. Gonna, yeah. It just kind of a nest egg. And you know, too, I think that's a, that's a, um, that's a testament to the content uh, as well. And the subject matter of the content, because let's face it, um, Nordic folk music is probably at its most popular that it's ever been you know what i mean like this right. style of music and and when uh you know viking this and and norse that right it, it's right. it's popular stuff right and so tapping into that and and but not taking advantage of it you know what i mean like obviously that's what you've been doing it's just kind of paying off now like you're seeing a return in your investment right and I look at that too as a way for like for me especially and, and any other um content creators that do stuff like this is is like uh you can you can milk that cow and 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 do stuff that's just gonna catch views um there, it, it's like a fine line like you got to balance it out like i want to do the you know the stuff that's gonna generate traffic you know and 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 generate an interest but at the same time, I'm not going to sacrifice um, misinformation or, right. or, you know, bad quality or anything like that um, in the interim. Like, let's make sure that we're, um, Sorry, you know, buddy. balancing it all out, you know, in, in, in a right way. So, but yeah, like you got you got the new EP coming out. Um, it, it'll be released when it'll be released. Um, there's a show coming up October 28th. There's going to be details for that in the... Yes description and show notes of this podcast so for those of you that are in uh the area of north carolina that that's going to be uh please go out and support the whole thing like support the event but but definitely check out zeb here um on on his performance is this your first live is this like your <laughs> debut live thing? sorry my laptop was dying man i had to move that's oh, okay um, everybody's like uh where's he doing um sorry man my laptop i thought i had enough battery sitting outside but it did not no you're you're, you're good man so um is this the first time live with you as far as i mean i mean like skogermore are uh, as a live oh you mean the performance yeah yes yeah. yeah sorry um that was a long journey to get where i was at to here so my brain's on law and i even left my meat outside i'm disappointed about that <clears throat> but uh yeah october 28th will be my first time uh performing live um with sigourney Moore. so um so yeah definitely so maiden voyage yeah it's it's yeah. one of those uh possibly going to be extremely nervous and i've been performing for 20 something years but i think this one's definitely going to have me on the the nervous and making sure it all goes through right you know uh-huh oh yeah i'm sure you know those those debuts are are uh they got to hit. They know, got to, uh, man, nerd. right? Yeah. yeah. I know I got friends and family come into it, and uh, I definitely want to be me and, and give the best performance. But I'm like, okay, I'm gonna definitely going to have to work on that adrenaline we were talking about earlier is keeping that adrenaline down. Yeah. But I do want people that are watching and listening here, you know, in that area, um, definitely uh, check out the event as a whole. It sounds like there's going to be some really cool things just going on in general. But, right. you know, for those folks that are listening and watching that are, wanting to hear Skoger more live, you know, if you listen to the tracks, there's going to be some links in the description and show notes of like videos that we talked about on this, uh, on this episode. Um, of course, all of your socials are going to be linked. So, but for the people that listen and stuff, they'll be like, Oh, cool. I get to see this live. You know, if I were, I mean, just to be honest, I have my winter nights thing going on that weekend. And then in just a couple of weeks after that, I'm actually going to be right. in Appalachia for fire on the mountain. But I'm like, I, I, you know, I would love to catch a live show um, one day. And I'm glad to hear that you've got, you know, more plans to do stuff like that um, into next year. 
um, yep. in case um, we get a, get a chance to plan and 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 come out and see you. That'd be yeah, awesome. Got, um, you know, and I and I do plan on definitely trying to get more out there next year. But I got um, I got a friend of mine who just opened or took over a music venue in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, called Chapel of Bones, um, and he's invited me to come play and perform at a block. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then I got asked to perform at the Total Viking Experience, which is up in like Apex or Raleigh area. So it's like a rena Renaissance Fair theme for an entire weekend. Yeah, they um, just did that. What was it like uh, last March. last month? Yeah. Oh, yeah. March. Earlier, yeah, March. Um, I think Papa and then we're up there. Fialvatier were there. Yes. Um, yeah. They 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 uh, they're a regular attendance for vendors there, um, and yeah, the uh, the owners reached out and asked me if I would be interested in performing like a kind of like an after party thing. So um, I'm excited, man. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, uh, that event is is grown significantly and i know last year they even had some billboards put up on the side of the highway get people oh, to wow. come here uh yeah it packs out man so um looking forward to that so i'm gearing up definitely to to get into probably i've been asked for a few other venues but definitely looking at you know like ren fairs is kind of kind of the theme that i'm seeing that's coming in and, and asking me um and i'm you know absolutely going to do those uh because why not right it gives me i get to dress up and uh get yeah. on stage and blend in with everyone else and this is going to look like a party from that era so like, yeah i'm all about it man well, awesome man i'm glad that there's stuff coming down the pipeline for you that you're going to be able to showcase your talent and share it with people in a live setting that that always means a lot to people and i'm excited for you about it so congratulations on all that appreciate it appreciate it thank you sir yeah um, so we're going to wrap it up now. Uh, anything else going on? Anything that we hadn't touched on that you want to say as far as, you know, parting words or. Uh, I mean, just want to say thank you for having me on, man. It's always a pleasure just to chat with you, whether it's business related or if it's friendship related, I enjoy that. So I'm honored to be on your show. Um, Good having you or as for school Mayor, Mayor. Um, yeah, I got, I got the new track heavens rent asunder which is all about Suther and uh, him setting the world ablaze. That's what that track's about. A um, little bit of a, there's a little bit of a lyric video um, out there about that, which, um, you know, <clears throat> we'll link that down below too. for yeah, everybody. It's just a Random clips, man. I kind of put together to keep fit the theme. Didn't really want to shoot a live video for that one. Um, but I do have plans on the next video that comes out will be a live video to represent the EP um but other than that um yeah just new music it's in the direction it's coming down the pipe the shows is coming and uh looking forward to the future all right man cool well, we're, we're definitely looking forward to following along the journey and uh we'll, we'll keep our eyes peeled and everybody else too um everything for skogermore and and uh his stuff is going to be linked down in the description or show notes wherever you're catching this episode be sure to check it all out show your support if you can and you're in the area you can make it a live show definitely do that um and give give zeb here a high five from me when you're at that <laughs> at, uh, that live show man it would be greatly appreciated and uh yeah uh everything that, that you're doing of course is coming out through inner demon media which yes. is also going to be linked down below um sid and them are great so definitely be sure to check them out um and yeah i think that about wraps it up so um for everybody listening and watching today hope you guys enjoyed the episode if you did, be sure to give it a like, react to it, uh, follow the podcast on whatever platform it is that you're catching this on, subscribe to the YouTube channel, do all of the things that these fickle algorithm gods so ingraciously seek and demand. Um, and so, yes, until we uh, see each other again in the next episode, may the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors smile upon you. Likewise, are you, friend. <laughs>